Hi there and welcome to a new episode on the Magnum Tech Channel. In this episode I would like to discuss this device which is a older type of uh, touchscreen, a resistive touchscreen connected to a Raspberry Pi, running a Max to Play, uh, the Logitech Media Server and the Jive Lite touchscreen uh, plugin to be able to control uh, some um, uh, Logitech Media Server device or Screenbox devices on my network. The background of this is that I was already using uh, the Logitech Media Server and a Squeezebox device, the Squeezebox Duet, uh, which consists out of a controller and a receiver. Uh, the receiver you put uh, next to your Hi Fi set and connect it to it. And this controller you can then use to control the Logitech Media Server, which runs on a separate uh, PC, uh, to be able to play back your MP3 collection uh, or uh, stream, for example. Uh, Spotify using a third-party plugin. Um, that, that worked quite well, but the problem was that my uh, controller broke down. It didn't charge anymore. At first I thought it was just a battery which can be replaced, but uh, it seems that there is something with the charging circuit. So I have to look into that. But in the meanwhile I, would, uh, I wanted the device to still be able to control the receiver and of course you can say okay you can do that with a smartphone app on Android you have the squeezer app to be able to do that but I like to have a separate device to be able to do this and I still this touchscreen around so I thought why not try to make a setup using this touchscreen in this video I'm going to show in short how I realized this project so let's take a closer look this setup first of all consists of the screen, which is a uh, LG Flatron L1510SF, uh, which has a resolution of 1024 by 768 uh, pixels, and it's a resistive touchscreen. The input is via VGA connector, and the touch uh, control output is via USB 2.0. The heart of the system is a Raspberry Pi 3 in the uh, official housing. By adding Velcro tape to the bottom of the housing and on the back of the screen stand, you can stick the Raspberry Pi to the monitor and then you end up with this result. The video output of the Raspberry Pi is connected to the screen via an HDMI to VGA adapter and the uh, control output of the screen is connected via the USB cable as shown. For network connectivity you can attach an Ethernet cable to the Raspberry Pi but this is optional as it also supports Wi-Fi. And of course both the screen and the Raspberry Pi 3 need to have power. Uh, in this image the power connector to the screen is shown but the Raspberry Pi USB uh, adapter is and not attached. So from the hardware setup I'm going now to the software side which means uh, that you have to prepare a micro SD card. Uh, I will be using the Max2Play software so I downloaded an SD image from the Max2Play.com website, I wrote the image to the SD card with a software such as uh, Win32 Disk Imager Insert the SD card in the Raspberry Pi and power up the Raspberry Pi. It's easiest to also have the Ethernet cable connected to your network for the further setup. After startup, you can enter uh, the URL Max2Play into the browser of an other PC on the same network to be able to get to the Max2Play setup interface of your Raspberry Pi. In the settings, you have to activate the following plugins. First of all the Squeezebox server, which is the Logitech Media Server software. This is optional when you have already another machine within your network that is running this software. The second is the audio player or squeeze player. And this is already default active upon install. And Jive Lite, which is the touchscreen interface for the Logitech Media Server. Jive Lite is a max to play premium plugin which means that you also need a, a license to activate it. Uh, a license of max to play Premium costs around uh, 9.99 euros per year. To utilize the full size of your SD card, 
you also need to expand the file system and for Wi-Fi connectivity you need to enter the SSID and Wi-Fi password of your network. To make the USB touchscreen work with a Raspberry Pi we need to calibrate it. For this you need some basic uh, Linux knowledge and you have to attach a mouse and keyboard to the system uh, because you have to work on the system directly. To install the software X-Input Calibrator you need to open a terminal screen and install it by typing apt-get install dash y X-Input Calibrator. You can now run X-Input Calibrator by typing X-Input Calibrator, pressing enter and following the instructions on the screen. You now have to touch four points on the screen. I would recommend to use a stylus to be more accurate and the program will output the calibration parameters. Normally you would enter the calibration parameters that you recorded in the file as indicated. However, in my case I ran into an issue. Uh, when I entered the recorded calibration parameters, the graphical user interface would not load anymore. After internet search I found uh, other parameters for my exact screen which uh, showed that there was also some X, Y uh, switch needed. In the end I used the parameters that I found on the internet and not the recorded ones and this works fine. A final issue I had to solve was that Jive Lite did not provide a skin which uh, fitted the resolution of my screen. In the end I opted to modify the juggler skin to make it fit correctly with my screen. Uh, more details on how to do this you can find in my blog article that I will link in the description of this video. And now a quick demonstration of how it works. It works as expected but it's not perfect. The resistive uh, touchscreen is not very responsive and also the mouse pointer is still uh, showing up on screen and, and I have to find out how to get rid of that. But I am now able to control the Logitech uh, Duet receiver via this device and play back Spotify songs like this one and also control the volume uh, via this interface. So in the end, okay it works, but still some room for improvement. And this concludes my video on this touchscreen device with the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Max2Play software. For more technical details, please look at my blog article, which I'm going to link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.